Today I'm going to show you how to make creative in-camera motion blur using constant light, studio strobes, and shutter drag. Hey everybody, Lindsay Adler here and I love creative lighting. In fact, there's this one technique that I find particularly interesting. It's where the subject is frozen in place, but parts of the frame blur and streak. And this is caused by using studio strobes, constant light, and a longer shutter speed. So that is exactly what I want to show you how to do today because there are a couple tricks that you have to know in order to make it work. Now, by the way, before I dive into this, I wanted to let you know that I have a class as well as a lighting guide dedicated to Creative Studio Lighting. That's the name of it. And I show this technique, exactly how to do it, the camera settings, the lighting position, all of that diagram and much more. So you definitely want to check that out and you can see it in the description below. And there are many dozens of different setups. Now I want to break down this setup and in the end I'll be using three strobes and one constant light. But you can achieve this effect by using just a single strobe or a speed light paired with any sort of constant light. And this could be a work light, a light bulb, an LED light source, you name it. But I'm going to build this in one by one because you actually have a lot of different considerations considering your modifier and where the light spreads and the uh, shutter speed and all of that. So let's start at the beginning with our main light. Now the main light that I have here is a pro photo strobe and on it is a white beauty dish. Think of your strobe, the light that's actually flashing as being what freezes your subject in place. Anything that that strobe hits is going to be in focus and frozen. All right, now in this case, the beauty dish, you can see that it's lighting her head to toe. I'm gonna to take a shot to show you where we're beginning and then we're going to continue to modify this setup. The beauty dish is lighting her head to toe, it's lighting the background, and overall I'd say that the lighting is pretty bland and uninteresting. But I do know that whatever is lit by that beauty dish is going to be frozen in place because of our flash duration. It's very quick and that's what freezes her. Now, how you introduce the motion blur is that you are going to add some sort of constant light. Now, typically what I would consider is uh, whatever you have lying around, that could be an LED light source, it could be a lamp, and something I do very often is I take another one of my strobes, I turn the strobe, the flashing power off, and I just leave the modeling light on because that's what I have around. Now, in this case, what we're going to be using is a nan light tube. It's called a Pavo. It's small, and what's great about it is you can drastically vary the power output, and you can also change the hue to be anything on the RGB spectrum, so I can get it to be exactly, exactly where I want it to be. So I'm gonna turn that light on, and I know that any place that this constant light hits, that's what's going to eventually have the blur effect. So I'm gonna take the same exact shot again, this time with our constant light on. Okay, so what difference do you see? When you compare these two shots, the one thing that you'll kind of notice is there's a little bit of a blue reflection on the right-hand side of her outfit. But overall, you kind of don't see much else. And so why is that? Okay, well, when you are working with constant lights, the way you control their brightness or darkness is by your shutter speed. Right now, I'm shooting at my camera's sync speed. I'm shooting at 1 200th of a second. And so that constant light is actually showing up quite dim. How I get it to show up is by using a slower shutter speed. Now, when I talk about slower, I'm talking about much slower. I'm talking about 1 20th of a second, a 10th of a second, an eighth of a second. So like one over eight, really, really slow. And that long shutter speed is what allows the constant light to show up. Now you may be thinking, wait, wouldn't the face be blurry then because it's a long shutter speed? We're gonna to get to that. However, the studio strobe, it flashes. So that actually freezes her face in place. So let's try this again, but I'm going to go to an eighth of a second. Taking a look at this next shot, you might think that, wait, this, isn't working. <laughs> you can't really see the effect. And I just told you that that long shutter speed is actually what makes the constant light show up. Problem is, is we have a few constant lights going around in this room. We have the constant light that's on me. That's recording and overpowering this LED light. Also, 
that beauty dish. The beauty dish has a modeling light. That's what helps us see where we're directing our strobe. Well, that is a constant light source. And so that's overpowering it. And so what you need to do is you need to eliminate ambient light. So when we began this setup, I made sure that I put curtains over the windows. We turned off the overhead lights, but that's not enough. So if you are doing this effect, you cannot shoot it in a room with big windows or overhead lights. It needs to be as dark as possible because when you go with that long shutter speed, any constant light is going to show up. So there are a couple of things I am going to do to improve this. Now, there's one other thing, the beauty dish. As I said, anything it touches is going to freeze in place. And in this case, it's hitting head to toe. And so I'm not giving enough area for that constant light to sh show up. It's kind of overpowering the entire scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to put on a grid on that beauty dish and see what difference it makes. And then what we're going to do is try to get rid of some of that, that ambient constant light. And you can actually see with your naked eye before you've even taken the picture, that beauty dish light is a lot more concentrated now. Before it was hitting head to toe and hitting the background, but now it goes from the top of her head about to the middle of her chest. And so I already know that I've restricted the light that's going to be freezing her, which gives a lot more room for that constant light to show up. So let's take a picture again. All right, um, so you do see a little bit of a difference, but as I said, the constant lights in this room, like that's the problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the light off on me as well as turning the light off on the modeling light of the beauty dish. So the beauty dish will still be flashing and then the only constant light is going to be the nan light over here on the right hand side. This is going to be a massive difference. And so this is how important it is to control the ambient light in your space. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be turning the light on me on and off. So as I dress camera, you can see me, but when I'm shooting, it's absolutely like it has to be off. So now look at what we've done. Once I've turned off the modeling light on the beauty dish and turned off any of the ambient light in the room, now you start to see that nan light, that blue light, the constant light showing up in the right hand side of the frame. And one of the things that's really helpful for this is when you're styling your subject, you need something that reflects light. So you can see that it's reflecting all over this beautiful suit. Uh, something with sequins or silk or gems, that's what you're looking for. But if you go with anything that's like cotton or black or absorbent, this effect hardly shows up at all. So it'll be most dramatic if there's anything that reflects light. So I love what it's looking like so far. And again, to summarize what we have going on, beat it with a grid, the nan light on the right hand side. So you can already see the effect if you only have one strobe and one constant light. But what helps make this even more dramatic is some sort of movement. So I'm shooting at one eighth of a second. And so I can, during that long shutter speed, maybe have my subject move, or I can move, or I can zoom my camera, or I can zoom my camera and move. And so every one of these combination leads to a different result. So let's try this and I'm gonna take a shot where I take a picture and I zoom a little bit. And then right after I'm gonna take a picture where as I do, I move my camera left to right. All right, in these shots, now you see that effect and you can see the light that's reflecting off of her jacket and in her suit and it's just making these beautiful streaks of light. That's how you mix studio strobe and constant light and shutter drag and camera motion to make a really interesting in-camera motion blur. I wanna get a cool shot, I wanna get a stylistic shot uh, for myself. And so I'm gonna make this a little bit more complicated. Obviously you can do it with one strobe and one constant light, but I'm going to add two more pro photo strobes into the mix and each one has a one by four foot strip softbox on them with a grid. And I'm going to add a teal gel. Now what this will do is it'll create beautiful rim lights on either side of my subject. But when I turn them on, you're not going to be able to see that they're on because I'm gonna turn them on and I'm gonna turn the modeling lights off. Because remember, anytime there's a constant light, like a modeling light, that would show up and create motion blur. So I'm gonna turn on both of those strobes but then turn their modeling lights off. So one final little piece of the equation is I'm messing with cool colors here. I've got the teals and I've got the blue. And so I'm gonna push it even further. I'm going to purposely set my white balance to tungsten so that everything goes really blue. And the point is, is I'm pushing this all into an analogous color scheme. So everything is cool blues and teals and greens. 
By the way, if you want to know more about using gels and color theory, I have a class called The Magic of Gels that goes into this all in depth, helps you decide what gels to choose. So I'm going to turn off my constant light, switch over to a tungsten white balance, and now it is time to get our shot. images have so much impact, but in order to achieve this, you need to understand how studio lights and constant light and motion blur and shutter drag, how all of those things work together. And if you are interested in these creative setups, well, you'll definitely want to check out my creative studio lighting guide and videos because I have many more setups just like this with this sort of in-camera creativity uh, broken down step by step. Now, if you want to see the gear used in the making of this image in this video, be sure to check out the links in the description below and visit Adorama.com. And of course, if you like this content and you want to learn more about techniques just like this, be sure to like and subscribe because I have so many more videos like this coming your way. See you next time.